This is an extended tutorial bringing a DE, digital elevation model, exporting contours, and then bringing it into 3D Studio Max to create a terrain. It begins with work in Arc Map and Arc Catalog, exporting contours from the DEM, adding a DXF elevation, and then exporting. The exported information is then brought into 3D Studio Max, where you generate a terrain object and apply a material. In ArcMap, you want to add the digital elevation model for the area in which you are interested. This information, uh, which is north of Albuquerque, was downloaded from the USGS from the National Map Viewer. It has been projected to state plane with feet, with the units as feet. So under project, uh, so now I need to take the digital elevation model and generate contours from that surface. The command here is contour, input the raster, identify or name the output feature, set your contour interval, and then OK. This process take depending upon the size of your model. It's quite extended. You can see that the process is working by looking at the lower right hand portion of the arc back screen and you can see the contour command sort of cycling through. When it's complete Arc map will draw all of the contours. I suggest using the information tool, zooming in and querying the contours to ensure that the elevations make sense. It is now a shape file or feature class polyline. Wait patiently, there's a tremendous amount of data in that layer. Contour elevation there looks appropriate. Close the dialog box. The next process now is adding a DXF, adding elevation, uh, which is understood on export. So what you need to do is add a column or field the name will be elevation. That's understood by the application in the export process to give you Z heights. Now you notice that it is null. There is no data. So what you need to do is now calculate. So the contents of elevation is equal to the contents of contour. Go OK. Wait patiently. And you can see that the values now appear. That's perfect. Close the dialog box and prepare for export. Right mouse click, data, export to CAD. You can use um, DWG or DXF. That's the input layer. The contour shape file is what I want to export. I'm going to create a DXF release 14 and then pay close attention to where I'm going to be saving the information. I have a special folder on my E drive for GIS terrain. Provide a recognizable name and a memorable location. OK. So again, this is a lengthy process. You know that it's working because you can see the command export to CAD cycling in the lower right hand portion of the screen. Remember there's a lot of contour so it could take quite a while. Now you see it shows up in your table of contents. I suggest using uh, 
the information tool or just file save your map composition. You could repeat the query if you choose. We'll exit ArcMap. Now, as a check, we're going to open the file in or in, open or import the data into AutoCAD. We'll go to the GIS terrain folder. There's the DXF. Open. Again, a lot of contours. Now I'll change to an elevation view to make sure that my contours have Z heights. It looks like a thickened line, so that's good. Zoom in. You might have want to change the display of the data to white. It'll show up in the background. There we go. Zoom in a little further and you can see that the contours have distance between them and they're all in the same elevation. We can tumble the model and look at it in 3D. Okay, this is ready and prepared to go into 3D Studio Max. Okay, in the next view, we'll look at Explorer, find our DXF file. You can see the site contour DXF. It's substantially smaller than the site, uh, than the file above it. That's because I clipped the data. So, we've launched 3D Studio Max. We need to establish our units. Decimal feet. Good. File import your data. Browse to GIS terrain. Okay, this is important. Set it to layer, otherwise you're going to have thousands of line entities. Have the weld vertices. I suggest changing this to one. Okay, so the data is now successfully imported into 3D Studio Max. So select it, you can see it's one object. So one thing to note, there's some uh, quirks potentially uh, with 3D Studio Max. Notice the coordinates that are showing up in the XY, the bottom of the interface. What you want to do here is use Move and Transform Type In and move the model to the origin. You can see the large coordinates, right? We're in state plane for Albuquerque, New Mexico, or the area north of Albuquerque. So change the X and Y to zero. Zoom extends to that viewport, and you can see the terrain is now visible on the grid, or close in close proximity to the grid. So in order to make a terrain, you need to create a compound object. Terrain is a subset of the compound objects. Put mash on the button, and now we have a terrain. You can see the cyan colors uh, beneath the edges of the triangulated irregular mesh. So deselect it, zoom in, you can tumble the model a bit just to confirm that it has three dimensions. Save the model, of course. Now that we save the model, we have a desire to make a material upon which we can put the um, grayscale uh, elevation ramp. So go to a new material, go to the map channel, the diffuse color will be determined by a bitmap. You now need to browse to the bitmap. Remember, if you're using the render farm, it needs to be in on the server. We're going to use the site image grayscale. It's a TIFF. We can change the way we view it. And that looks exactly like our elevation model. All right, go back to the parent of the material, change its name to 
New Mexico. Now the object is selected. Now assign the material to the terrain. And let's render. You notice we get an error message. There are no UVW and there are no um, directions on how to place the bitmap on the terrain. So what you need to do is add a UVW map modifier. I suggest box or plane and use the fit option. A little further down. Or you can go bitmap fit just to make sure. Luckily for us, the bitmap and the terrain are the same dimension, and that's key. So now that we've done that, we can render and we see the bitmap terrain on our model. Tumble it a bit. Zoom in.